Hello, everybody. Welcome into Talking Fitchburg on this Thursday, March 3rd, 2022. Another Thursday in the book. And glad you're tuning in with us here for Talking Fitchburg. we got a jam-packed show for you today. We're going to get you the latest on the upcoming election, election information. There's some changes to the upcoming election. We'll break that down for you coming up in our headlines. And we're going to check uh, in with our friends at the Historical Society and share an interview we did earlier in this year. Uh, with former Mayor Sean Faff uh, has joined uh, the Fitchburg Historical Society. So he'll tell us what's happening on their front. And uh, we're going to check in with Jack Pearson from our building inspection. He's going to be talking about if you're considering renting your home, there are rules for renting your home. Uh, you've got the, the B&B, right? Those uh, bed and breakfast. Uh, what's the uh, common one, Andrew? And now I'm drawing a blank. Airbnb, thank you very much. Anyways, we're going to break all that down for you, tell you how you what you can do uh, with that. And uh, so much more that's coming up here in a little bit of time. So let's get to election information. Spring election is right around the corner and there are some changes coming uh, this year. So uh, the spring election is set for Tuesday, April 5th and the election uh, polling uh, uh, locations uh, hours for election day will be 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. And your polling uh, locations and information is on your screen. There's no changes to any of our locations although the districts have changed. So you may be voting at a different polling location uh, this time around. We've shared that information with you already this year and we'll continue to do so, but there are changes uh, to some of the district mapping uh, where you're gonna vote. The sample ballots are online though. If you are interested in checking out the sample ballots, Andrew's got it covered here. So there's sample ballots uh, for wards one through four. Remember, whatever ward you're in is gonna, uh, will have uh, your district uh, and that information. And uh, wards five through nine, there's two different ballots depending where you are at uh, for that location. And wards 10 through 14, also a couple of ballots there based on the school districts. And uh, finally, uh, moving on to wards 15 through 20, there's three ballots there. Again, uh, differences uh, do come down to schools, uh, uh, school board and school information there. Those are all available online at our website, fitchburgwi.gov. We will share the link, of course, so you can check out those sample ballots. Some changes also with the absentee voting this year. Absentee voting rules have changed as far as when you drop it off. You can only drop off your own ballot. You cannot drop off uh, for somebody else. And it be noted that drop boxes, they have to be in front of a clerk's office. So the clerk's office had the drop box in front of them where they can monitor it. You can use the Dropbox. Our Dropbox is in the foyer, and it is not uh, monitored by a clerk, uh, at least uh, for the rules that are uh, laid out for this. So our Dropbox cannot be used to return a ballot uh, for elections uh, from here on out unless there are other changes. So please be aware of those changes. We'll continue to remind you of that. There are already signs posted out in the foyer for our Dropbox because utility payments and other payments still are being made through that Dropbox but you cannot drop off your absentee ballot in the Dropbox. And the city doesn't have any other Dropbox uh, for you, so you will have to bring it inside to uh, directly to our clerks. And that does it for our headlines. All that information is online at our website, fitchburgwi.gov. Take a quick break. Coming up next, we're going to check in with the Fitchburg Historical Society. That's next right here on Talking Fitchburg. After you joined our family, it was like, I really do feel complete now. We're all just trying to keep things running for those who rely on us. That's why we don't have time to be sick with the flu. We don't have time for delays. Ready! We don't have time for spills. Next. We don't have time for setbacks. Let's be real. Getting the flu shot helps you fight the flu. Get a flu shot for yourself and those around you too. Brandon met a girl on a dating app. He finally found the courage to ask her out. No answer. He started to panic. Was he being- Hey, sorry I didn't respond, I was driving. She must be a keeper. Welcome back into Talking Fitchburg. Joining me today, former mayor, 
former TV star of Fact TV, <laughs> and uh, and so much more. We've got uh, Sean Faff here today. Sean, uh, welcome back uh, to uh, TV of Fact TV, and uh, how are you doing today? Well, thank you, Jeremy. It's nice to see you. Um, I was excited to hear from you and to do this interview. I'm doing well. I'm still living in Fitchburg, still active in the community. Um, my wife and I live in Seminole Forest. Uh, we have a beautiful little half pity that I walk in the Seminole Glen Park twice a day, especially on cold days like yesterday is a little tough, but <laughs> very active in the Fitchburg community still, still part of the Lions Club and still um, involved in the community. Also have been selling real estate for the last few years since I was mayor in Fitchburg area. So still very involved and it's nice to reconnect with an old friend like you. You and I did a lot together in those four years when I was mayor. Yeah, you know, I uh, I was behind the camera the whole time. So to be out in front now is uh, definitely different. So, uh, you know, just uh, just talking with you on camera, I think is uh, pretty, uh, pretty awesome indeed. Well, you always didn't we always say that you had the perfect face for radio, right? <laughs> well, I still say that every single day. And everybody knows that who's watching uh, TF. And I shouldn't uh, talk. Um, no, no, we're, 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 well, I'll get you at the end. Don't you worry. Uh, what, but we're really here today, uh, because you have joined the Fitchburg Historical Society, which is an awesome organization. And, uh, Sean, uh, tell us, uh, what's going on, uh, at the Historical Society. Well, thank you for that. Yes, I have been reached out to by some friends, some great friends on the Fitchburg Historical Society over the years. And as my time as mayor 10 years ago, and traveled throughout the city, really learned a lot about the city of Fitchburg. I remember fondly doing an event, which Fact TV covered. I know where we did placemaking on the bike trails heading to Paoli in the southern end of our city. And I'm a farm kid myself in Northern La Crosse County. My family grew up, I grew up in Northern La Crosse County on a dairy farm, and my family had been in that area since the 1870s. I got down here, obviously, because of school and life things like that, but I understood rural families and how important kind of being in a community for a long time. So I really took an interest in that when I was mayor. We did a lot of placemaking things, if you remember, the great new logo we got that's everywhere, really inspired out of Fitchburg's history. My family happens to be German and Norwegian, but down here, obviously, the Irish settled this community. So after I kind of got myself situated after being mayor, get more involved in the community, was reached out to be part of the group. And I joined the group this past fall, and I'm excited to do that. And we got a 12 member board and the group, as you know, and as when I was mayor, we put the library in, of course, was a great community effort. I was honored to be a mayor to open up a library in a city for the first time we had a library. One of the key parts of that is the library has a Fitchburg historic room. So it can tell you how important the history of Fitchburg is and the modern day research and curating that continues to go on about the history of Fitchburg. We have designated space in our library. So the cooperation and collaboration, not only with the city, but the historical society and to have that space. So anybody can come into our library and go in and work from that space and learn about the historical society and the his, Fitchburg history itself, which is phenomenal. Yeah, and I think it's really cool that a former mayor uh, is joined on to this because you're right, as a mayor, you're you're opened up to so many things besides just the election process itself. I mean, you're going out and meeting uh, constituents, but uh, you're truly uh, got to see, and you were in during a pretty active time uh, for right. Fitchburg. It was a pivotal, uh, pivotal time in Fitchburg, in fact. Um, I, and I think of one of the ones standing out on a very cold, cold day on a ribbon cutting uh, up in Uptown. And uh, uh, you know, and and just there was farmland uh, and, and big space, but how important that Fitchburg is seated in such the, the perfect place when you think about it uh, in Dane County. Uh, but I think that gives you the perspective of being on the historical society and, and really embracing um, the culture of Fitchburg and making sure that it is uh, shared with future uh, residents and beyond. Well, that's kind of why I wanted to do it when they reached out to me. And I admit that the history of Fitchburg back to the 1840s. I remember, Jeremy, you probably have the videotape of this. We did a proclamation at City Hall recognition, recognizing the Kinney family had been here since 1844. And as a history buff myself, I was able to say that that was, you know, pre-James Polk administration, you know, 
how long the history goes. But one of the reasons I wanted to get involved is I wanted to talk and bring to the board a little bit about the modern history. We just recently celebrated the 50th anniversary of the fire department. I know 50 years, I'm 50 years old, just turned this year. Yeah, that seems like a long time, but really it's not in the arc of where our city has been if you go back to the 1840s. And so many people that you talk to, and when I was mayor and people talk to me when they're selling their houses, when I go talk to people in Wildwood or Wildwood South, I remember when Fish Hatchery Road was cornfields and there were cows out there and this and that. We have so much history the last 20 years that's happened as well. And as you mentioned, I was mayor a decade ago and proud to serve two terms and really work hard and redevelop our city. That was during the 2011 census was 23,000 people or 24,000. I think now we're gonna get numbers to show we're over 30,000. And as I always said, and people probably heard me say this ad nauseum, what other community is blessed to be between the fastest growing business epic in downtown Madison and UW Madison. So I think there's so much history that of the last 50, 20, 10 years, the other thing I think that the, the Historical Society, which does great work, and I'm proud to be on this board with so many longtime family people that have been here forever, but also great people that have moved here 30 years ago. Our president, Alan, is just does a wonderful job, and he's been in this community working for Omega, so he knows the growth of Fitchburg, is the incredible diversity. We talk about the geographic stuff, the farms, Stoner Prairie, heck, we named a new development after Stoner Prairie um, on that. We, we respect our history of that, but also we've got the urban, the rural, and the suburban diversity, but the diversity of people, the demographic diversity and the history of that, you know, as recently was discussed at City Hall, Fitchburg was the only community in Wisconsin that's ever elected an African-American mayor. Now the city of Milwaukee has an opportunity to spring to do that, but Fitchburg did that many, many years ago. And so our community, as it continues to grow, continues to be more and more diverse. When I was in there and I saw those demographic numbers 10 years ago, it was 34% African-American Hispanic. You can only imagine those numbers will continue to grow. And the history that those folks bring to our community should be discussed and should be researched and chronicled and all of that stuff. So that's part of it I want to be. I am never going to be able to say I remember Fish Hatchery Road when it was a Bridgman's instead of the new Park Bank um, corporate headquarters. Those long routes for me go back to La Crosse County. I can tell you because that part of the state is growing as well. I can tell you about how La Crosse County has changed. But I can't tell you that down here and I respect those that can, but I only think I can tell a story about the last 20 years or so in Pittsburgh. Yeah, and it's good. And uh, we want to get into to talk a little bit about the website, uh, which is a great uh, spot to start if you're interested in learning anything about uh, the historical site as an organization or just the history of Fitchburg. Uh, it's the place to be. Right. Yeah, that's Fitchburg. Uh, Fitchburg uh, historical site website is just a wonderful place to be. And I want to make sure I have the right address here, Jeremy. Uh, I should have that in front of me and I will keep going here. That website it's just wonderful. And the greatest thing about it is you can link through the city's web page as well. But like I said, the city has a very much has a connection to the historical society, but the historical society is its own organization. That's FitchburgHistory.org, FitchburgHistory.org. And that website, you can see all kinds of great old plat books. You can see older landmarks in the city. And one of the great things about our community, I know you've done a lot of coverage of this, on FACT TV is the five different bike trails that go through Fitchburg. I mean, it's only community in Dane County where you do that. So within just a short bike ride, you can be in rural Fitchburg and really see these old landmarks. And we've done a nice job, as I mentioned earlier, about placemaking those and really kind of stopping and pulling off. If you gotta take a drink of water or whatever, you can read about many things that happened here many years ago. And that's what the beauty of this is. But since you know the fire department was 50 years ago, Fitchburg became a city. It would be 40 years ago next year, 1983, that Fitchburg actually became a city. It was a long township for years. And so the other thing I think the Fitchburg Historical Society can do is it can give us a longitudinal look at our history. And it says on our website, you know, the history 
is yesterday, today, and tomorrow. And I really wanted to look at that in a sense of that perspective of today and tomorrow, because in the scope of Fitchburg, I kind of fit into the today. Been involved in the community for 15 years, very involved the last 12, if you will. And so going forward, where does this history take us? You know, credible transportation corridors, a fish hatchery road, Highway 14, finally got done with Verona Road. The expansions that are occurring in this city, the population growth, the neighborhood plans. <clears throat> For example, former longtime city planner, you know him well, Tom Havel, doesn't live in Fitchburg himself, but he's on the Fitchburg Historical Society. Brings a great perspective because he helped plan many of these neighborhoods and named many of them. I actually learned something, Jeremy, that was interesting. I knew this before I. Um, went to the last meeting where I reconnected with Tom Hobble. The neighborhood of Wildwood has streets like Restall, Fresher, Rembrandt, Pembroke, or excuse me, Margate, Pembroke, all those streets. Do you know what those are named after? I do not. Tom Hobble did know that, but I knew it as well. Plumbing parts. So I'm just telling you, <laughs> somebody's got to capture that history. There's a reason it was named after plumbing parts. There's a reason why we have Quarry Hill neighborhoods because there was a Quarry Hill dairy way back in the day. All of this stuff is connected. And as you know me, and this isn't about me tooting my own horn, but I was a guy that loved to bring Fitchburg together as a community. In fact, my real estate slogan is connecting people with places. We built the library, Splash Pad Park. We really worked hard to bring things together. Fact TV has helped do that because we don't have those one school district, we're all together at the high school basketball game, but we have things like the historical society that can really continue to bring our history to our today and tomorrow. Yeah, I, I think that's what makes this uh, city so unique as the things you mentioned, the diversity, the rural uh, and, and our, our city is just, um, all of those factors and beyond, I think, makes it uh, so interesting. And uh, Sean, we'll look forward to talking to you and the rest of the staff at the Historical Society. Uh, and uh, tell Tom hi for us, too. It's been a while since I will I've heard do that. his name. But darn, I'm going to have to come to one of those meetings just to uh, check in with him as well. So uh, thank you for time. Nice seeing you, friend. And we'll talk uh, with you and others real soon. Thank you. You bet. All right. Check out the Historical Society's website and we'll check back in with them next month here on TF. Take a quick break. More to come. You are watching Talking Pittsburgh. See on page four that the projections need to be blood next Thursday. Seriously? Thursday? Can't do that. Uh uh. This is really inconvenient. I have yoga that day. I have no time for this. So. I can't do Thursday, but I can do Friday. Disasters don't plan ahead. You can. Talk to your loved ones about how you're going to be ready in an emergency. Don't wait. Communicate. If you love them enough to suck the snot out of their nose at 4 a.m., then surely you'll check NHTSA.gov slash the right seat to make sure they're in the right car seat. Welcome back into Talking Fitchburg. Joining me today for the first time, I've only been begging him for I don't know how many years. It's my friend Jack Pearson from Building Inspection. Jack, welcome to the show. How are you doing, sir? Yeah, I'm doing great, and thanks for having me today. I it's am so glad you're here, and uh, I, are you sure you've never been on the show? I feel like I've interviewed or something, but. No, you've tried for about 12 years. I kept uh, going kept to the low other profile. Side. Yes, absolutely. Fantastic. Well, we got your boss one, so we got you now. We're, we're working down the list. We'll, uh, we'll have you on more, hopefully, uh, in the future. Uh, but we do have you on here today uh, to talk about short-term rentals and everything surrounding that. A lot of people are looking for ways of uh, bringing in some income uh, or, uh, or different avenues, if you will. And we've heard of things like Airbnb, for instance, and, uh, and other things associated. So uh, we want to kind of talk about it um, 
uh, from the city standpoint, the things you need to know if you're uh, considering doing this and um, from both the, what you know from the state and uh, local uh, municipality. So first and foremost, uh, Jack, start with just uh, what is considered a short-term rental? Well, a short-term rental, which is actually defined by the state as a tourist rooming house, um, is a place where uh, people may stay for short terms. Um, transit housing, you might want to call it. And it, by definition, it's anybody that stays for 30 days, less than 30 days at any one given location for a fee at a residential facility, such as somebody's home. Um, but the criteria on that for these short-term rentals, we'll call them STRs from here on out just to make it easy, um, is they cannot rent them out for more than 180 days um, within any given one year, one calendar year, which runs from July 1st through June 30th. Uh, that residence also has to be their primary home, which means they get their water bills there, their utilities, they pay their taxes, that's their voting destination. They cannot go buy a house at 5520 Lacey Road and just rent it out on a continuous basis throughout the year. And that was, was that set up by the state of Wisconsin or are you blending uh, with our, our ordinance as well? No, what, uh, it's actually a state law. It's under uh, state statute 66, which is municipal law for, um, it's called limits on residential dwelling rental practices. And so it all starts right there. And by state law, they actually have to be licensed with the state. Um, in this particular case, Dane County is the acting agent for the state and they do the inspections and the licensing for, for the state. And that includes, you know, the fees that are implemented, you know, whatever they have, and then also um, the application and they have to perform an inspection at, at that property before they'll issue the license. Um, once that happens, they then have to come to the city with those, that licensing agreement from the county well, AKA the state, and they will have to show that to us. It, it actually goes through the clerk's office and they have to register with us, which is a little bit different, different than licensing, but we just want it on file with the city. And there's a hundred dollar fee for that. The short term application is on our website. And they also have to pay a $50 one-time fee of $50 for, uh, because they have to pay taxes on that, just as if it was a hotel or motel. Uh, lodging facility. Um, and what we're finding out is there's not a lot of them that are being registered or even licensed at, at this level. And so that kind of drives in uh, what, what's the purpose or, or what are some of the problems associated if, if when people are renting out their level and first maybe just look in general before we talk about um, the ordinance and stuff I mean overall if people are renting out their houses um, what are what are what could be potential issues with that uh, that would come to your plate well and this this kind of came into play at our local municipality perhaps three or four years ago we started getting some complaints from a, a couple different neighborhoods about excessive parking excessive in and out uh, noise um, parties at night and that's kind of what made us implement the ordinance within us so we have a better feel for what's going on where so that you know the, the departments that are, need to know you know have a, an awareness of this and um the neighborhoods usually aren't happy either you know and there may be a homeowners association uh, where they where they can't have those type of facilities or it could be a neighborhood association agreements and um, so they really should check with their local covenants to see if it's even allowed. And then at that point, check with our zoning, probably before they even go to the county for licensing because it may not be allowed. Um, I'm not aware of any situations where that would be the case, so. Yeah, it's uh, uh, good to know. And then turning our attention, uh, I guess, closer to the, the ordinance and, and filling out the application for people who are avoiding going through the process and are doing this, uh, what's, uh, what's the outcome of that? Uh, somebody obviously is gonna probably submit a, some type of a complaint and it gets to you, uh, what steps do you take uh, moving forward? Well, typically, and, and when we first did this ordinance, we tried to put an educational campaign out there and just you know through, through the website and, and various avenues and social media. Um, I don't know if it's kind of fallen you know, on the, by the wayside in the last three years or people are, I, I think most people wanna do right, but there may be some people trying to circumvent the system too. Um, so that being said, I mean, once 
I think our biggest issue from the building inspection standpoint is making sure that all the all the uh, appliances are working, the smoke detectors, the fire alarms, um, and more importantly, the occupancy limits that we're seeing on some of these that are being advertised. And, and we'll we'll see you know a two bedroom and a maximum of eight, or a three bedroom maximum of fourteen, and that's just not acceptable, you know, by by state law basically or our own terms. Yeah, and and it's easy for you. This is where it gets even more interesting. Unless you're running a totally underground system, I mean, these are public sites, so it's easy to fly. It's easy to jump into a search engine and search Airbnb, Fitchburg, or or whatever rental, um, and and find these things. So there really isn't a, a reason that you wouldn't be able to learn or find mm -hmm. uh, more about it. Um, so if you are, I guess, use the term busted, or uh, you have to pay a visit to the homeowner, what uh, what's the outcome of that besides trying to make sure they get signed up? Uh, what uh, penalties could you face if you're not following the rules specifically for Fitchburg? Well, I think uh, specifically for us, I mean, we'd, we'd send them out a letter notifying them that they're in violation of several different things. One, renting it without the license, two, advertising it without a license. And there's a uh, a list of about five or six different things they could be cited for. Um, without having the records in front of me, I believe the fines can go up to $250 per per event. So that could be on a daily basis and, and for each violation that's in play. Uh, that being said, I believe that the state, which would be the county issuing citations, I think they're theirs is up around $700 by the way the state code is written on that. So it can be quite pricey for just filling out some paperwork and, and having a track record of what's going on. So, Yeah. And I, again, it's not that uh, you're, you're trying to, to deter people from doing this, but it's really that there there's reasons behind all of this. It's safety. It's uh, consideration, consideration for your neighbors. Um, and uh, again, following the, the the laws that are in place to to protect everybody involved. Correct. Yes. All right. Well, um, if uh, people want to find more information, the the information is online at our website, fitchwi.gov. If you go under the clerk's department, and then you can uh, see all the forms there, you'll find the uh, STR or short-term rental uh, license and the ordinance information. It's all right there. Uh, and uh, Jack, uh, we hope to have you back on the show real soon. Uh, any final thoughts uh, as we wrap up? Yeah, I just want to add, we're going to be kind of updating our website on probably the building zoning and maybe on our main page, kind of doing a, once again, an educational campaign for the July 1st date that's coming up again. And we'll probably do a news blip in the uh, Fitchburg Star coming up here in one of the recent uh, papers. Well, and we'll get you back on the show once those updates do happen, Jack. Uh, appreciate the time, buddy. We'll talk with you real soon. All right. Thanks for having me. Take care, guys. You bet. Uh, Jack Pearson for our building inspection. Again, you can find more information on the short-term rentals and all of your building inspection needs at the website, fitchforwi.gov. Take a quick break. More to come. You are watching TF. Multiple studies have shown that marijuana can slow both driver reaction and response time, which can be really dangerous. He's here. He's here. Wait, wait, wait. What? I can't drive. What? Why? My. Oh. <laughs> Welcome back into Talking Fitchburg, wrapping up our show for the day. I want to thank Jack Pearson from our building inspection department, helping you uh, understand about uh, renting out your house. All of those rules and stuff we talked about are at our website, uh, and you can check that out at FitchburgWI.gov. As we wrap up here, remember you can stay connected with Fact TV. Besides, you know, we always say go to the website. You know, you can find us there and watch us. That's all you wanted, right? 